Hello friends, hello professionals, and welcome back to my channel, The Sea of Regulation. For all of you that have subscribed, a huge thank you. And for those that haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting on? My name is Simone Martin, and I'm a financial services regulator. And today's video is gonna be a bit of a fun one. It's about digital assets and which ones I hold. And at the end, if you stay, you'll find out a little more information about me as it relates to cryptocurrencies. But before we dive in, let me get the usual disclaimers out of the way. The views on this channel are my own. They do not represent any other regulatory authority, international standards set up, nobody. These are just my personal views. And they do not constitute professional or financial advice, especially this video. So with that out of the way, let's dive in. Now, I've had a one or two videos out talking about cryptocurrencies. And I asked in one of those videos for persons who might be interested in finding out what it, cryptocurrencies I'm into. And for those that reached out in different ways, this video is for you. Make sure you comment though, you know, just put your comments in below. So the first and my largest cryptocurrency holding, XRP. I believe in the project. Now, as I said in a prior video, a lot of cryptocurrencies actually have projects behind them. And why XRP? Not necessarily the life-changing potential wealth that comes with holding XRP. Um, yes, I was a very quiet member of the XRP army uh, for years. And me coming out, uh, hopefully it doesn't present a problem to my day job. But XRP is looking to facilitate so many things, including cross-border payments. And I've mentioned in a prior video that I do not enjoy the fact that a wire transfer from one country to another in the same banking group costs $65. I am not impressed with the fact that people who have businesses in the Caribbean in many jurisdictions have to pay three to 5% on their credit card fees for every transaction. So this is when the customer comes into their store to buy, um, to buy or to pay for a service. And they have to pay three to 5% in the Caribbean region. In the rest of the world, it's one and a half to 2%. So already people in the Caribbean are at a disadvantage because we're paying higher fees. And then there's also the challenge of having issues of just receiving money with the de-risking and correspondent banking. So sometimes a wire transfer can take a week, a part of 10 to 14 days. And with the speed of business and life, that's just not going to cut it in 2021. And it's painful to see business people thri try to thrive and try to survive with those challenges. And XRP is one of the cryptocurrencies that I personally believe can address a lot of those issues and allow for us to be better integrated with the rest of the world. We have a lot of talent in the Caribbean and I think that talent needs to get an equal opportunity with the rest of the world in their businesses. The next cryptocurrency, if you know anything about XRP, might not come as a surprise. My next biggest holding is XLM. If you know the history of XRP, you will know that the creator of XLM was also a part of that. Um, again, I think in terms of cross-border payments, it will have tremendous potential. And so it's one of the projects, um, the Stellar Lumens, it's called, um, it's one of the projects that I think has tremendous potential as well to help with payment systems. The next project, so now the, the other cryptocurrencies that I'm going to name are in no particular order. And it may be surprising to some of you, I love me some ADA. Charles, if you're watching this, um, could you reach out to me? Because I think that you're doing great work on the African continent, but there are a lot of Caribbean countries that I think would benefit from the same integration uh, that are ripe for actual development, but are smaller economies that you can get some quick wins. That's my personal plug. I don't know if you'll ever see this, but it is actually a project I do believe in. And again, no particular order, another cryptocurrency that I hold and stake, dot, polka dot. 
um, I'm interested in the project. And there are a few more other cryptocurrencies that I am definitely interested in that I'm wondering, should I say anything? I'll, I'll see, I'll, I'll actually see. I have a little bit of keep, Kava, and I have not enough Algorand. Algo is another project that I'm watching and I'm thinking will do pretty well in the near future. Cryptocurrencies that I do not hold, but wish I did. VeChain. I actually got turned on to VeChain when it was, I think it was 0 .007 cents, but it's not available on all exchanges. And as a regulator, I kind of don't feel right using an unregulated exchange. <laughs> so that's part of why it's a little difficult for me at least to invest in certain cryptocurrencies. Another one that has come across the radar is XDC, so XFIN. Um, that's relatively recent, but I got aware, I became aware of that a few months ago. Again, it's not on the exchanges I use, and it's a little bit difficult in terms of acquiring um, certain cryptocurrencies without access to certain exchanges. Um, what's another one? Hedera Hash Grab. I'm interested in that. I'm going to look into that. I think it's going to be offered on one of the exchanges that I actually use. And interesting point that I think is useful to raise. So there was a paper that was published a few months back talking about the red flags in relation to the dig digital asset space. And one of them I did not agree with as a regulator. It was a document put out by the FATF. Um, is the use of multiple exchanges. Well, you kind of have to use multiple exchanges if you live in certain countries. And it's akin to having multiple bank accounts. Um, it's something that I guess that is more common in certain parts of the world because certain banking institutions allow for different access to different markets. So of course a US bank allows for, or US based bank allows for better access into the US economy versus a more international bank. And so it's not uncommon in the Caribbean for working people to have bank accounts with more than one banking institution. So the translation into exchanges holds true for me. If I want access to certain cryptocurrencies, I will use a different exchange. But in my particular case, I only use regulated exchanges. Now, if you're interested in hearing about the DeFi projects that I'm looking at, um, drop it in the comments below. We're not going to touch on that this video. But as a bit of a bonus, I've mentioned cryptocurrency exchanges. And I can tell you that I have accounts at three, but I only use two at present. The first one that I have, I use the most. I love the customer service. Again, this is not an endorsement. They're not paying me. I have no benefit from saying this is cracking. I like Kraken. Release the Kraken. Kraken is a regulated, it's actually regulated as a bank and it has a regulated exchange component. And so I did my research and I would encourage everyone to do their own research, but Kraken is the exchange I use primarily. Um, the second exchange that I use, um, but very sparingly, is Coinbase. Coinbase was the first exchange I started to use, but the service at Kraken kind of took that out of the water, <laughs> pun intended. And the last exchange that I have zero cryptocurrencies on is Binance. And it's been out there, it's known. I did some research, I opened an account, I never did anything with it. I probably still have an account, I don't know, but it was one that I got onto and hey, nothing against Binance. I know they're doing whatever they need to do right now in terms of continuing their business. It's one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges, but it just wasn't the one for me. So that's your bonus. Kraken is my exchange. And perhaps I'm into the water uh, with the sea of regulation. So maybe it was a natural fit that the Kraken would be the thing that I gravitated towards.
But let me know if you enjoyed this and let me know in the comments again if you want to hear about the DeFi projects that I'm looking at. Um, I think it's an exciting world out there in terms of crypto. I think there's a lot of potential for game-changing moves. And there's a lot of potential for people to get rich <laughs> off of investing. No, let me just say right now, not financial advice. I have to say that a lot to make sure I don't get a YouTube strike. You probably see it flashing across the screen in this particular video to make sure I do not fall afoul of any other issues because I'm a regulator and I don't want that. <laughs> but I quite like the space. I found it really entertaining to look at some of the some of the activities that's going on. I recently joined Twitter. Um, Twitter, the Twitterverse is a hot spot of information as it relates to cryptocurrencies. But it's definitely not where I get all of my information from. What I would encourage anyone who is interested in the space is to do your own research. There's a lot of chatter about regulators saying don't invest. And my thing is this, I, we're all adults at least the ones watching this channel should be adults. You have to make your own decision. What is the difference of someone telling you you should invest in land versus investing in cryptocurrency? You have to investigate because somebody could be telling you invest in a piece of land that's basically on a swamp, has no, it's not mineral rich, there's no development potential, the neighbors are horrible, so the value will actually depreciate and not appreciate, but they will tell you, it, you know, you should invest in land and, and that's the blanket statement. And there are other people out there that are telling you, you should invest in crypto as a blanket statement. There are no absolutes in this life. I am not offering you advice. What I'm doing is telling you, go out there and get the information for yourself. And I'm just sharing what I've done with my own assets and what I've done in terms of the research and what exchanges I like and use. And if you found it interesting, definitely hit that like button. Comment below, tell me what cryptocurrency exchanges you use. Tell me what cryptos you hold or what projects you're looking at. And if you want to hear about DeFi projects that I'm looking at, let me know. And I'll definitely be back with another video. So at this point in time, I am going to sign out. I am going to catch you all later because the market has really, really been on us. It's been a little, at the point of recording, nothing is really happening on the market, but everyone expects it to pop off because it's been coiling up for a while. So exciting days ahead. That's what I think, not financial advice. So with that said, I'll see you on the next one, guys.